Hey, what's going on guys? Root of the Null here, and we are looking at some more Python. Today we're checking out dictionaries, and now dictionaries are a lot like lists, but you index the values and the variables and the data and the information that you're holding within the dictionary, you index them in a different way than you would a regular list, because dictionaries are kind of like associative arrays. They have what we call keys that will link or associate a different piece of data with that data itself. So this can sort of break your limits a little bit because it lets you like uh, it lets you retrieve data with string sometimes, and you can retrieve it with integers just like you would a regular list. But it doesn't have to be in sequential order. Rather than being like indexed with zero, one, two, three, four, you could have it in completely arbitrary orders. You could skip around from like three to six to maybe twenty one, twenty nine or something. It it doesn't matter. You have all these ways of indexing your data. And it's in a completely different form, though. But you have to understand that because you're you're changing with the order of things, you can't really loop through them because you don't have an ordered list. It's it's unordered with keys that are usually string variables, and then you have information that might not go anywhere along in that context. But uh, let's take a look at an idle. I'm gonna get started. Uh, I don't plan on creating a new script or anything with these because these are pretty simple, and I just don't see too much use for them. I had worked with dictionaries at one point because I think I was trying to set up like a, a question and answer program and I had stored like the question as, as the key and the answer as the value or something like that so I would display the, um, the question and then I think if they typed in something that was a correct answer it would just realize that that's the correct answer. I don't remember too much of how I did that but I realized there was a problem with the way I was doing it. And it's been so long now that I don't exactly remember what it is. And I, but what I did is I, I ended up using two different lists and sort of packaging them together with by using a list inside of an inside of a list. But I don't know. That that's a whole other topic. But let's get started with dictionaries. I'll show you guys what we're doing here. I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna name this uh, dictionary just so you guys are able to understand what's happening here. And you denote things with a bracket. And here you're going to set up your key, first of all. And I'm just going to call this uh, key1. And then we can change this to... And we use a colon. And the colon is going to denote what this key will actually link to or represent or associate with. When you look up key1 in the dictionary, it will return this value. And we'll just use like 27 or something. And now it's just like a list in that you can have as many values and variables as you want to. And you can add and add things to them and that sort of thing. So uh, let's do another one, key one. I'm sorry, key two. I don't know what I'm saying here. It's it's late at night, people. <laughs> it isn't really. I'm just I'm just silly. Uh, and we'll do this maybe ten, and then we'll have a completely random one, just like uh, rhubarb pie. I don't think I even spelled that right. I don't know. And rhubarb pie can just be nine thousand and. 187 or something, because who doesn't want 9,187 rhubarb pies? But yeah, here we go. We got our dictionary set. If we uh, we just return this in the interpreter, we get exactly what we typed out. Key 2 is, one, is 10, key 1 is 27, rhubarb pie is 9187. Now, this is an interesting, see, interesting thing. Check it out that the value has been sorted. 10 is first here. 27 is... Uh, is next. So it's looking at key 2 first and then key 1. And the reason it's doing this is because it isn't in a specific order. It automatically tries to think of it as sorted by value. But we don't have to even be doing this. We can use dictionaries that have uh, numbers for their keys. You can use 4. Actually, before we before we jump into that, we'll try it in, as a, in a different variable. Dictionary 2. And we use like four is equal to um, four. Let's use the actual letter typed out name. We can have like nine can be uh, nine can be nine, and then we'll have one as one just to see if it'll sort this. So now we have dictionary two. Let's see what we got here. Nine is nine, four is four, and then we have one is one. So now it's setting it up again, except it's using keys in descending order. Or something. I, I don't know. I, it's interesting the way that Python sets this up. But since we're indexing it with whatever we choose to, we can use a dictionary 
if we tried dictionary two, dictionary two is what we're going to be looking at for now. If we tried using four, it's going to give us an error because we, there is no key error. There is no key titled four, but there is a value titled four. So we can use dictionary two, and then we'll index it with key four, and now we get four as a string. If we go back to the regular dictionary that we just created, the first one, if we uh, we index it with uh, key one, we get 27, just like we had defined up here. But see, this does kind of ruin a little bit of structure for us, though, be because we can't uh, loop through this. So this is why I don't see too much logic, in, or at least too much reason for using dictionaries, I guess their time can arise, but if you're ever trying to process multiple things, you might want to, you might have to be able to loop through it. And that's why I myself prefer lists and just manipulating them in any way, any way, shape, or form. But if we do, let's say, a dictionary, I'm curious whether we can add things on. Let's try, um, mm, let's try 10 equal to 10. So now we have a uh, dictionary to. Let's add a dictionary to it and see what happens. No, it's not going to work for dict dictionary types. Hmm. I'm curious some of the functions that we can have with dictionaries. If you if you have any object and then you put a period so you can look at their you can look at their local functions and that sort of thing. If you just hit control space, you have that auto com auto, um, let's see, what am I thinking, that autocomplete feature. And then you can look through some of the functions that we're going to be getting into more detail later on. Now, another interesting thing is you can test with this, of course, just like you would be able to do in a, um, in, what am I thinking, uh, a list or a string or that sort of thing. If you wanted to do, if, uh, let's see, for is in dictionary2, we can uh, print, found it. Now, I want to see what will happen here. Okay, it's not going to do anything because it's only looking in keys for the moment. If we do for in, if we do just regular for, we print found it, it'll say found it because for as a key is in there. I wonder if we can use uh, if for in dictionary to dot uh, iter values let's give it a go and it finds it because it's it's going to iterate or loop through the values so that's just another thing you can play with. Dictionaries are interesting. I do recommend that you check out some of the functions you can run with these before I go too in-depth with them, because I will be looking at them very soon. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you can give this video a like and be honest about it. <laughs> I hope maybe you can uh, maybe you can leave a comment, tell them what you think, what you recommend, what you uh, what you liked about this video, what you didn't like, some things that you might wish I would do when I'm recording, when I'm making these videos, and that sort of thing. But uh, but hey, uh, it'd be cool if you could uh, maybe subscribe, maybe maybe uh, maybe uh, do your thing. <laughs> but uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.